get my six. As I get my six string. I had to stop with the music because a plane was flying overhead and I couldn't hear if anything was back here singing, singing along with us. So I know you're like, wow, crazy lake. Just when we thought you couldn't get any crazier, here you are rocking the bright red Brooks Brothers shorts with little blue crabs on them that don't match your Bigfoot Sasquatch shirt. Here you are rocking one of your wife's hats with the brim all about around it to keep the sun off your face. And what's up with the broken glasses? Look. I only use the lenses, so I don't care if this fell off. Here's what's going on today, guys. Welcome to my office. I'm rocking the outside office today with the stand-up desk my beautiful bride dearly, aka Giggly Girl, just bought me <coughs> <coughs> off of um, some fake book market or something. 15 bucks. And uh, so anyway, it's kind of too tall to use in the house because when I get into the zone and I write for hours, I, I can't stand up that long writing. So, but I'll bring it up here. So I'm working outside today for several reasons. I'm taking some good advice from folks who have commented on the channel about coming up and trying to play music. Um, some folks have, have suggested Kenny G. Uh, wow. That sounded like an extremely loud tree knock. I think it's working already. Folks have suggested that we may be able to lure him, her, it, or they out of the forest instead of having them creeping along the wood line. And let me make sure you can get my six. I, I want to get out of the way. Sweet music might bring them out. So I'm trying it. It's just one of the things I'm working on today. As well as writing the next Bigfoot Sasquatch Files volume, which is number four we're on now. Because number three, I just got the email this morning. The print version is already available on Amazon as well as the e version for your Kindles. Um, there's usually like a 48 to 72 hour delay in print, but print, the print version was made available in less than a day. And yes, as you know, go to the link in the description box to get those books. But I'm also reading. That's why I've got my reading glasses. And I've got that to that point in life. Uh, where I have to have these now even just to write because it's like I can if it's here I can see it, but if it's here I can't Okay, there's no planes no cars. Let me give it give the old six string another lick or two here Keep watching so I got more splaining to do About something else. We're, we're gonna talk about some music here and it all makes sense I'm 46 and I had an epiphany the other day while I was out running uh, due to a song I was listening to the night before that I hadn't heard in 20 years. And when I had this epiphany, I actually started crying while I was running. So thank God it just looked like sweat it had anyone seen. But I want to share this with you. Oh, and I'm also staying hydrated today. And we've got this to see if we can hear if anyone or anything is back in there singing along with us. This is amazing, guys. This really works. I can hear birds like hundreds of yards out. Listen. You hear that?
Okay, <clears throat> so, I don't know if I told you why, specifically why I'm outside today working my outside office. I love it out here and all this, and it's not as hot as it has been, but I've got a bunch of tiny little Filipina ladies running around my house right now, cleaning it from the top down, and they started in my office. So, uh, my wife's friends, Jenny and Lonnie, shout out to both of you girls, shout out to your husbands. Like, messaged her and say, hey, you want to get together at your place today and just clean your house? And Dearly was like, sure. And she asked me, what do you think? I'm like, sure. I mean, it's not that it's a pigsty or nothing, but... So anyway, they came in. So in my office right now, here's Jenny. All these girls are like five feet nothing, except Lonnie. She's like 4'11". Uh, and they're, I think Lonnie's 40. Dearly and Jenny are like in their 30s. So Jenny is standing up on a chair with a toothbrush, scrubbing between cracks. Our walls are like the old wooden slat. The house, the house was built in 1903, and that's part of the original, and it still has the original walling. Lonnie's got a, a freaking wet and dry vac filled with water, cleaning something, and, and dearly standing there doing what she does best, bossing everybody around, telling them what to do. And I was trying to work, and I couldn't in that environment, because as you can see, I sing, I write, I read, I do all these things, uh, I, some people say this is all an act. I don't know. I, okay, I've been in a movie. Okay, I was in Bigfoot Sasquatch the movie, arguably both the best Bigfoot Sasquatch movie ever, as well as the best movie, entire full length feature, more than two hours long, made exclusively on an iPhone 11. So I guess technically, because I am a movie star, I'm also an actor. Okay, but here's the deal. Here's the message for today. It's, and that's why I'm wearing the red shorts, the Brooks Brothers shorts that are red, they're obnoxious, they have little blue crabs on them with a Bigfoot Sasquatch t-shirt and his hat. I do what I want. I'm not hurting anybody by writing my silly stories not hurting anybody by playing my silly songs. And I, I could play that actually a little bit better. And I could play a lot of different songs, but I, I'm not because of copyright infringement things here on YouTube. You know, I wrote a song last summer, put it on here. I'll try to see if I can find it and pin it to the end of this one. It's not very good, but here's the thing. I like doing it. I like reading, I like writing. I like making stupid videos. I like making full length featured movies. Um, and it boils down to this. I remember a very dark, night in the arabian desert we were in northern iraq we were close to the borders with syria turkey and the tip of iran and i was riding on top in the gunner's turret machine gunner and we were getting close to the end of our deployment and that's the scariest time that last 30 days it's like wow i've made it this far can i make it the rest of the way so I was sitting in that turret and I was looking at the stars in the desert and I made a promise to myself and that promise was this if I make it home which I did to thine own self I will be true I'm not going to waste my time doing the things that I don't enjoy doing I'm not going to waste my time doing things that I feel other people want me to do and I'm not going to do the things I like the way other people think I should be doing them to thine own self, I will be true. I'm going to write my books. I'm going to sing my songs. <sighs> and I've kept this promise. <sighs> now, here's the lesson. Here's the epiphany that brought me to tears last week while I was running. You know, um, there are a lot of really good songwriters. There's a lot of good musicians uh, who are true poets. But let me tell you something. There are some that are prophets. Um, when I was in college, me and my roommates, we always were listening to Bob Seger's greatest hits or the Eagles' greatest hits. Um, if you were to come into our apartment any given time of the day, you would hear one of those two albums playing. We had it in CD format back then. Now, if there's any millennials watching, just go Google what those are. There were these little round discs that you used to have to have to play to listen to your music. Speaking of listening. Yeah. 
and speaking of staying hydrated it's like it was just pleasant all morning until i set my outside office up now the clouds are parting the sun's coming back and i bet you it's creeping up on 90 degrees right now it's okay I, I, by the time i get down there those girls are working so fast i'm sure they're done with my office or they will be by the time i get down there Okay, so the other night, just because I hadn't heard some of these songs in 20 years, I'll make sure you can get my six back there. <clears throat> I went on YouTube, and uh, I would listen to that old Bob Seger album, and you know, he's got that song, Like a Rock. Most of you listening know it. I, I look at my analytics. I know 70% of you are actually older than me, so Bob Seger, you probably listened to him in high school. Um, like a Rock, I listen to that song, and I... I clung on the words and it's like 20 years ago when I was listening to him, he was telling me exactly how the next 20 years were going to go, but I didn't know it because I hadn't seen it. You know, it's like you can tell a lot of people, Hey, you shouldn't do this because, but until they actually go out there and find out for themselves, what you tell them really is of no, no use because experience is the best teacher in my very humble opinion. Uh, and I've found this to be the case in my life. And I know many of you watching have too. You're older than me. You, I, you've forgotten more than, than I, I probably hope to ever know, many of you. So I listened to that. And I was like, wow. So then I started listening to some Eagle stuff again. And <clears throat> I came around to Don Henley's song, Heart of the Matter. And this is, this is you know, he, he, it was the unplugged version. You can find it on YouTube. Um, I think it was recorded back in like the early 90s or maybe it was 2004 i don't know this it was that whole uh unplugged thing they used to do on um vh1 i think it was so he's introducing the song heart of the matter and what he said just before the song was so powerful my did my son was with me and he didn't understand it i had to explain it to him but don henley says this song took 42 years to write but only four minutes to sing i was like wow and my son looks at me and goes what's that mean I was like, this is a song about what he believes he's learned in life. Because I guess he was 42 years old when he wrote it. So it's like all the lessons of 42 years put it together in a song that took four minutes to sing. So I start hanging on to the words of that song. And, you know, of course, you know, it's about the, the general theme is that uh, everything he's been through, the relationships he's had, the life, he, the life he's lived, the heart of the matter, what he's come to to see it all being about is forgiveness but in a different way than i've ever viewed it because he 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 then says even if even if you don't love me anymore and at first it just sounds like a really pretty love song or sappy love song he's trying to get the girl back but then you realize no he's not this is forgiveness with no strings attached he's not trying to get the girl back uh, he kind of has accepted that he'll probably never see her again. I thought, wow, this is, and it hit me on that run the next day. That's true forgiveness. It's forgiveness with no strings attached. We're getting someone's attentions. Attention. I don't know if it's 
actual crows or if they're watchers. So let's keep watching back here. But think about it, folks. That's powerful. Forgiveness with no strings attached. We're not forgiving because we hope that, well, maybe if I forgive this person their trespass, their trespasses, they'll forgive me too. No, whether they do or not, whether they spite us, begrudge us, um, hold a grudge against us for life, that's none of our business. It's about forgiving them despite any of that because it's true forgiveness with no strings attached. That's the only real way to let go. Not because we hope to gain something from doing it. And not even about looking like we're the bigger person or we're the better person. And a lot of times we think that, uh, you know, there's things that, that, that we uh, need to forgive people for that we really don't. You know, for many, many years... I started playing guitar when I was going through um, a divorce. It's something I always wanted to do. And so when I was going through the divorce and I was out, I said, you know what, I'm going to start doing some of the things I want to do. That's when I started writing again after about a 10 year break. And here is, I was wrong in two ways. Number one, I used the excuse that I wasn't doing what I wanted to do because other people told me, hey, you know, don't do that anymore. You're grown up. Stop writing your haunted fairy tales. Go get a job where you make a lot of money so I can spend it. Okay. I was, a wrong, I was the one who had the fault, not the person that told me, but it was my fault for listening to that. And then so then you go maybe 15, 20 years later, and it's like you're still harboring a resentment towards somebody telling you this, and you say, wow, for 10 years I could have been writing... I'd be on Bigfoot Sasquatch Files number 1,050 right now if I hadn't listened to that person. It's not that person's fault. It's my fault, okay? And that person was a beautiful person inside and out. Just the uh, coupling was not meant to be forever. For a time, yes. For a season, for a spell, but not eternity. So me not writing, me not learning to play guitar until I was 32, I think it was has nothing to do with that person that's all on me because uh well because it's all on me so but forgiveness uh maybe for other things um with no strings attached truly is the only way to forgive Don Henley said it himself. Took him 42 years to come to that conclusion. I'm 46, and even though I heard that song 20 years ago, I just now finally got it the other night. Actually, the next morning when I was on a run. So if you get any wisdom out of that that can help you in your life, and, you know, uh, I know a lot of people, and I make fun of these folks. I don't take this to heart. It's like it's like little jobs. Um, I miss the videos about corn. Your videos are stupid. Bigfoot's not real. Uh, why are you wearing those clothes? I intentionally dressed obnoxiously today to show you how much I don't care. Uh, and because I wanted to wear these shorts. I got them at a thrift store last year for $3. I know they're like $80 or $60 if you buy them at the Brooks Brothers store. Saw them in my drawer. I never worn them. I said, I really want to wear those shorts today. And I thought, well, this doesn't match. People are going to rip this outfit apart. Then I said, Kevin... Remember that promise you made yourself on that dark desert night back in Iraq? You want to wear those shorts, buddy, you go ahead and wear those shorts. And I did. And I thank each and every one of you who have stuck in here during the duration of this very long video. That yes, in Mark, Mark Twain fashion, I did kind of drag along because I want to make sure those girls are done cleaning my office down there before I get back. I think they're done. So thanks for being here with me. Thanks for being here for another episode of the PBS. S. The potential Bigfoot Sasquatch.